Howdy, Possum Patty here. It is June 9th and I am nature journaling. But again, I'm going to get the mail, but I'll see what I can see along the way. The air smells so good today. Sky is blue. A little bit of a breeze and the birds are singing. Can't go wrong with that. Just the other day, I was learning about polygonums or the buckwheat family. I found some smart weeds or not weeds they're called and the lady's thumb has the thumbprint on it and this one is called a tufted knotweed I believe which was smaller looked a little different than the lady's thumbs and then today coming down the lane from the mailbox here's a different one growing on the other side of the road Oh, this might be tear thumb. There's some more growing back in there amongst jewelweed and poison ivy and cleavers. There's one over here. You notice how quick I was to name the tear thumb and sometimes other plants I forget. But once you tangle with a tear thumb, you don't forget its name or what it looks like. It's a native and it has these recurved or backward facing bristles on them. So you can stick your arm into a patch of tear thumbs, but when you pull it out, ouch, because those little bristles grab a hold of you. The shape of the leaf is called sagittate. It's like an arrowhead. It has a single point at the top and at the base of the leaf it has two points. And it had a little bit of a jaggedy edge. When I got back to the house I saw a damselfly on the front porch post. I drew a dragonfly the other day and learned that they were in the order Odonata. The damselfly is also in the order Odonata, but it is in a different suborder than the dragonflies. There are several different ways to tell a damselfly from a dragonfly. One way is that dragonflies hold their wings open when they land and damselflies either hold them closed or at a 45 degree angle. Damselflies are also smaller and weaker flyers. A damselfly's front and back wings are almost the same, where a dragonfly's wings are broader in the back. Now these look narrower than the front wings because it was the way that the dragonfly was holding the wings. I saw them at kind of an angle. Looking through information about different kinds of damselflies, I believe this might be a pond damselfly because of the way it was holding its wings. This damselfly did not have much color. I did see a white spot at the end of its abdomen. Maybe it is an immature blue dancer damselfly. Later on, I took a walk over towards the woodpile. And the rushes are flowering. Some of the rushes seem to be getting flower buds. They look unusual coming out the side of a leafless stem. These rushes were sort of reddish at the base 
and is probably a native common soft rush. And then I looked down and found a fairy world of tiny ferns no bigger than moss. Look at, the, look at these little tiny, tiny ferns growing down here with the moss. Let's see if I can get down here. Look at these little tiny ferns and a little bit of moss. So these ferns must be at the very beginning of their life cycle. The life cycle of the fern is very complex. It consists of two generations, the sporophyte and the gametophyte. This is called alternation of generations. The fern that you see growing is a sporophyte because it forms the spores. The spores are formed in the sporangium inside the sori on the back of the fern leaflet. When the spores are released, if they land in a suitable spot, they'll form this little structure called a prothallus. Now this is the gametophyte generation because it forms the gametes. The gametes are the eggs and the sperm. The sperm will fertilize the egg, and this will become the zygote, or the baby fern. It will start to grow, get a stem and a leaf, and some roots. Eventually, the gametophyte will die off, and the new generation of sporophytes will grow. Now this tiny fern was no bigger than one inch tall. Did you find the squirrel at the beginning of this video? Well now look for the squirrel in the ending credits. Sherry, Rachel, and Susie, thanks for coming along. Bye-bye.